How Your Brain Works, Part 3, Brain Capacity. How much computer power will it take to replicate the thinking of a human brain? Stick with me and check my math on this one. The answer is astonishing. In the last video, I described the basic function of a neuron. In this one, I'll explore what it takes to implement a brain-level set of neurons on a computer. In the next video, I'll get back to the functionality needed for AGI. Recall from the last video that a neuron works by accumulating the electronic charge of neurotransmitter molecules. Once a threshold is reached, the neuron fires and sends a neural pulse down its axon to the synapses which connect it to other neurons. Synapses then transfer neurotransmitter molecules to the target neuron. To calculate the needed computation, we have to establish some ground rules and make some assumptions. First, let's presume that only the neocortex is needed for thinking, that other parts of the brain controlling coordination and autonomic functions will be developed on a different model. The neocortex contains about 16 billion neurons. Neurons fire, on average, once every three seconds. But what about those images of neural pulses every five milliseconds? Well, there is tremendous variation in firing rates. For example, neurons in your visual cortex fire a lot. But a neuron representing a memory of your yellow motorcycle might only fire when you think of your motorcycle. How often is that? Because there are so many synapses, the synapse computation load overwhelms that needed for neuron firing learning and all other functions. This simplifies the calculation. Here is an algorithm which will perform the synapse calculation when a neuron fires. For details, pause the video and take a look. The key results are that the memory requirement is 12 bytes per neuron plus 12 bytes per synapse, and the estimated computational requirement is about 100 clock cycles per synapse. Now, I'm going to make two simplifying assumptions. At the end of the video, we can back these out again and see how the results are impacted. First, let's assume that neurons are redundant by a factor of 10 to 1. We can be pretty sure that neurons in your brain are redundant because we can remove so many of them without diminishing your brain's performance. We just don't know what the redundancy factor is. 10 to 1 is the greatest redundancy factor I would consider reasonable. Likewise, we'll assume that neurons average 100 synapses although your brain might have 10,000. Again, we can be sure that synapses are also redundant, and again, we just don't know by how much. If you're keeping score, I have reduced the computational requirement by at most a factor of a thousand, but probably much less. My result will therefore represent a minimum computational requirement. So what kind of computer do we need? we'll need to be able to process 53 billion synapses per second. First, let's look at RAM. Just to store the synapse data, we'll need 1.9 terabytes of RAM. What does this quantity of RAM look like today? Second, instruction cycles. To do the calculation, we need to handle 53 billion synapse calculations per second, so we'll need a lot of parallel processing power. I suggest we do this on GPUs, and two of today's NVIDIA R6000s have a combined capacity of over 6 trillion cycles per second. More than enough for the 53 billion synapses. What would such a computer look like, and what would it cost? Well, it would look like this. I can buy this computer today for $53,940. Astonishing. But I hope you've remembered that factor of a thousand simplification I made earlier. Perhaps the assumptions used here are correct, but perhaps they are low by a factor of a thousand. So for a worst case estimate, you'd need a machine with two petabytes of RAM and the equivalent of 2,000 of today's GPUs. Moore's Law is still alive and well for both RAM and GPU cycles. Based on the current trend, such a maximum machine will cost $50,000 only 15 years from now. The key conclusion is that no matter what your assumptions, sometime between today and 15 years from now, we'll have a $50,000 computer 
with the computational horsepower of your brain, or sooner at a higher cost. So the question is, what can we do with such a machine to make it intelligent? I'll get back to that topic in the next video. For more on this timely topic, read my new book, Will Computers Revolt? Preparing for the Future of Artificial Intelligence. Available now at Amazon and book retailers worldwide in paperback, hardcover, and ebook editions.